G'day cocktail lovers and welcome to the Cocktail Dome. Where we bring you play-by-play -play calls of great big cocktail action. And how are you today, Arch? Well, to be honest, a little bit worried, Chuck. What's got you so worried? Why were we asked to sign a liability waiver today? Well, I've been assured it's all strictly routine. A strictly routine thing that we've never been asked to do before. Well, all routine starts somewhere, Arch. That is a disturbingly cavalier approach to life. Well, let's see if Mr. Araby can set your mind at ease telling us what's happening today. Thanks, Chuck. And I think Arch will actually enjoy today's experiment. That's why I had you sign the waiver, because it is, of course, a cocktail experiment. I'm just taking a classic cocktail and doing my version of it with an extremely non-traditional base spirit. Well, there you go, Arch. Just a classic cocktail, but mixed up a little different. I'm still not sure I should be signing the life away. But you did sign the waiver? Yes. Okay, then. Well... Here's what I was thinking, for no reason in particular, I was thinking, you know what, you know those tropical drinks with rum? Theoretically, they would work just as well if you made them with whiskey. And so, I'm on a quest to experiment with some classic tropical cocktails that would normally have rum, and I'm going to try them with whiskey. Keeping the juices that you'd normally get with the rum, but I'm going to make it with whiskey. When it comes down to it, most of the popular tropical drinks are just complicated sours. And who doesn't love a whiskey sour? So, today's experiment is going to be a whiskey-based Mai Tai. I'm going to pretty much follow through the traditional Trader Vic's recipe for this. And the first thing in that is some aged rum. So I'm going to have some aged whiskey. This one specifically, an Australian whiskey from Bakery Hill. Uh, so most of the recipes I saw for the rum said a six to ten year old rum. This is right in the middle. It's, uh, the, it's a limited edition they have they call Blunderbuss. It was aged for eight years. It's a little strong at 58% alcohol, but it's what's going in our shaker first. Two ounces or 60 mils of aged whiskey. Next up is some orange curacao and I'm going to add half an ounce or 15 mils of orange curacao to the shaker. We're also adding lime juice. You don't usually see that with whiskey, but that's in the traditional Mai Tai. So I made up some super juice a bit earlier and we're going to add about three quarters of an ounce, 22 and a half mils of lime juice to our shaker. We're going to split the sweetener. First up, some orja. But one day I'll get around to making my own. This is store-bought. Going to put about a third of an ounce or 10 mils of orja into our shaker. The final touch is some sugar syrup. I'm going to add about a quarter of an ounce, seven and a half mils. That's like a bar spoon and a half if you just want to eyeball it. And that's the last thing that's going in our shaker. Not quite the last thing, of course. We're adding some ice, putting our shaker together, bang that in hard, give it a shake for about 10 seconds. I'm going to garnish it with a nice piece of mint. I would do the traditional lime as well, but I didn't have any lime on hand because I was making super juice yesterday. No limes here today. So to compensate, I'm putting in my favorite maraschino cherry on a skewer. And here is your whiskey-based Mai Tai. Oh, I like that. It's, it's like markedly different. That's a really bold whiskey that's in there. You certainly wouldn't mistake that for rum, would you? It's nice, but very different characteristics. You know, I mean, this is not necessarily going to be for everyone, but it's all in the name of experiment. I mean, am I right, Arch? I feel like I can just about taste the char from the whiskey barrel. This is a real winner. You can't go past a new idea, because really, as we love to say here on the Cocktail Dome, life's too short to waste time on boring cocktails. Cheers! Cheers.